Let's have our hands together for the choir. Our choir, they are wonderful, they are beautiful. I appreciate them again and again for their sacrifice. Part of their ministry, family, work, career, business. God is going to bless every one of us today in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to use this opportunity to thank every one of us for our spiritual, physical, and financial contribution towards our birthday celebration last week. A lot of gifts, a lot of envelopes. <laughs> Praise God. We are not taking it for granted. We want to say thank you to all our friends and our family that stretch forth out of love towards our family. God bless you in Jesus' name. I pray that uh, days of celebration will not depart from our lives. Amen. I felt that God will heal somebody this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God will heal somebody mentally. God will heal somebody emotionally. God will forgive somebody financially. And God will forgive somebody concerning their health issue this morning. Because Jesus is here. I said, Jesus is here. Don't you ask him? You get ready for your healing. Thank you, Lord. Let's open our Bible to the book of Matthew chapter 8, verse 17. Then we'll sing one song and then I'll pray simple prayer and the healing will take place. Matthew chapter 8, verse 17. I feel the power of God already. That 
that he might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. Saying, he himself took your infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Past tense, he himself took our what? Our infirmities and bore and bore our sicknesses shall rise. You are the Lord, thy land. You are Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you once again. Thank you because you are the word from the beginning. The Bible says the enter. 
ignorance of your world brings life and brings understanding to the simple. Holy Spirit, I surrender myself to you this morning. That you will speak through me to your children, O oh God. That everybody under the sound of my voice this morning will not remain the same. But I pray that at the end of today's service, every one of us will have a cause to glorify you. For in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. And the people of God will say, Let's say Amen. amen.
we are migrants. And some of us here, yeah, some of us are our children have not even got to grow up yet. Especially some of us are migrants that have yet to stay 20 years, 10 years, 5 years. Ah. God, by the time we get to Australia, I will just go to church. I will not do anything. The only thing I will just do is the money. Praise God. It's good. It's good. But only what you do for Jesus that will last. There is a man in the Bible called Ezekiah. Sorry, I don't know why I'm saying this to somebody. There's a man called Ezekiah. The prophet visited him and said, Ezekiah, put your house in order. We are about to talk about order. Because you are about to die. God is about to kill you today. Who here is of his death? And be happy or you want to do something about it. You know, prophet, like I told you, prophet will speak the mind of God. Prophet, do you what? They speak the mind of God. They don't want to look at your face. Whether you are beautiful or you are handsome, or you are tall, or you are big, or you are rich, or you are poor. Prophet, they speak the mind of God. And the prophet prophesied. And he went back. Ezekiah said, eh, I'm going to die. The Bible told us that if you face the wall and begin to tell God that God, this is what I've been waiting for you. This is what I've been waiting for you. Why must I die now? And the Bible told us that God added how many years? Is it 70? 51 years. And the prophet was going, God spoke to the prophet again. So your service in the house of God can give you longevity, can bring blessings to you. Hallelujah. Are we there? First Corinthians 14 14. It says, Let all things. Be done decently and in order. Let all things, he didn't say some things, all things be done decently and what? In order. So you don't do it anyhow. It has to be excellent. You know, before that, that verse, Paul was talking to the Corinthian church. The Corinthian church. This church, they are gifted, they are talented, but their life is not in order. They are very, very good in regular thing, but they do things out of order. It is then that you hear that somebody went to go and sleep with his father's wife. Do you remember that in the scripture? Paul said, I heard that somebody had come to Corinthians. They are the one that professor. When you see, when you are talking about the gift of the Holy Spirit, is in Corinthians. They are kids. But at the end of the, at the same time, their life is everywhere. They are not in order. So after Paul spoke to them, he said, guys, let everything about your life be done decently and what? Because there are so many believers. So many of us, our life is more in order. We do things anyhow. Even some of us, we make decisions anyhow without having a second thought. I 
I want us to know that order is very important in every aspect of our lives. If you want it to be good or great, if you want your life to be good or to be great or to be better than the level that you are now, you need order. In your marriage, you need order. In your business, you need order. In your career, you need order. Even as a church, we need order. And I want to let you know, the God that we are serving is a God of order. Hello? The God that you and I serve is a God of what? In Genesis chapter 1, from verse 2 and 3, you will see at the creation where God demonstrated order. Hallelujah. Oh! 
ahorita en España. What did I say? Respond like this, like a lion. And roar. Roar! Get out of that place in my marriage. Get out of that place in the life of my children. Get out of that place in my career. The Bible told us, God said, let there be light. And there was light. He, he broke order in peace. So God is a God of order.
some things that kill some people, it does not kill that thing. Am I making sense? You can be blessed. It's just a meditation. It's going to work. It's going to have time to kill out that one. Before you know it, the person will just sleep and it's all over. He said, Which?
your wisdom. I see God giving you understanding, bringing order into your life, into your family, into your career, into your education, into your destiny. In the name of Jesus, even to those of us that have ministry, I see God giving you inspiration to bring order to your ministry. And I've told you in this church that I want to talk about ministry. Ministry is not preaching alone. It's not carrying microphone. Ministry is meeting other people's needs. So there are so many ways that God has why God wired us differently to meet people's needs. Don't say you have when I say you have a ministry, you say, ah, I'm not a pastor. Not that that's what I'm talking about. Your own ministry can be giving. Your own ministry can be evangelism, can be follow up. Your own ministry can be exhortation and encouraging people. Your own ministry can just be prayer. Now, quickly, what is order? What is order? Number one is a statement which all, of all components or elements are arranged logically and naturally. And I'm 
will show you my faith by my works. Shout hallelujah. Let's move fast quickly. Number two, order. Is a statement made by God with authority that this son will do something. Order is a statement made by God with authority that this son will do something. That's why he responded like a lion. Like a lion of the tribe of Judah. Let out the lion in your life. Number three. I love this. It is an instruction or direction that must be obeyed. Order is an instruction or direction that must be obeyed. So the point of that progress in 2023, you must follow order. There's somebody. If you want to make progress in 2023, you must follow what I Are you scared of us or scared of me? Please, can you help me by telling me? Move up. Because you will succeed in Jesus' name. Your failure ends this year. Your disappointment ends this year. You will make it this year. You will succeed this year. 2023, your year of unlimited breakthrough. And you break through. I say you break through. I say you break through. In the name of Jesus. You know, as I was preparing this message, me myself, in some areas of my life, I've been living out of order. Especially from January, I mean, from November, I've been planning. We have tried to plan to move down, do everything. My prayer room, my library, my living room, everything scattered. That is part of this order. Some of you, your shoe is in the north. Your towel is in the south. Everything, your brush is in the north. You know, if you, whenever you need it, you now begin to look for it. That is part of order. You need to put things right. Everything you already look for can Every time you only do what? It's out of order. All those little, little things is affecting you. Some, some people have got their car keys and they miss a few things. It's because there's no order. It's laughing. Why are you laughing? And it is your car keys. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So God told me, hey, son, this is a preacher. I want to preach about that. Look at your room. Shoe is there, coat is there. I begin to give you excuses. You know, sometimes when God is correcting you, you start giving excuses. Uh, God, I say, hey, because of uh, church, we are moving, I've been busy, work, family, this and that. God said, go and put everything in order. The Bible says, obedience is better than sacrifice. <laughs> what about when I my church? We say, ah, everything is clean. I said, quiet. Do not be that you are of God and not of you. Please let us do order into our lives. Let's bring it to our life so that we can make progress. Listen to this. Don't forget this statement. The purpose of order is to create productivity and create comfort. I say it again. The purpose of order is to create productivity and create comfort for you. If you are living a life of order, you will be productive. And you will be living a comfortable life. Because everything is a choice. And you see some people that when you enter their house or when you enter their office, everything is in place. Like even some of them, because they respect you so much, if you mistakenly pick their head and put it in the wrong place, they will grab it and put it. Have you mentioned it there? They will grab it and put it. They will not come. They will grab it and put it there. They are telling you this is the way I live my life. Are you blessed or blessed? Has God spoken to you this morning? 
Are you adjusting? Are you changing? And as you begin to put all these things into your life, I see God increasing you. I see God enlightening your course. In the name of Jesus, quickly, let's see reason for this order. I will give you two that will close. Reasons for this order. This order comes when you make promise you cannot fulfill. Yeah. 
are repenting. There are so many people in the street of Bible, in Australia, all over the world, that are wasting their time with God. And if this one land you can use to use South Africa, it will be better. It will be better. I'm mighty laughing. It will be better, it will be better. They call it, it will be better, it will be better. I'm from Africa. I'm speaking broken. Nigeria will come from Nigeria. It will be better, it will be better. Yes, it will be okay. It will be okay. That is what we say. 2002. It will be okay. 2003 is doing it again. You still doing the same thing. Ah, it is time for a change. It is time to bring order. If you are blessed, lift up your two hands and give God thanks. Thank you, Lord, for your work. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for sending your word into my life. Give me thanks, give me thanks, give me thanks. If you are blessed in this morning, if God has touched one area of your life this morning, Celebrate, give me time for this book. And I pray for you. You are spoken to me also. I give you praise. I give you praise. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. I want you to tell us in the name of Jesus. Every form of disorder they are around me. Every form of disorder they are around me. I command you to go now in the name of Jesus. Pray, let me have a life that there was light. In my marriage, in my career, in my job, in my business, in my destiny, every form of disorder, in my health,